You're in the Stampede, West Virginia Metro News only show dedicated exclusively to the Thundering Herd. Here's your host, Dave Wilson. I have given up trying to figure out this Marshall basketball team and trying to figure out what team is going to show up on what night. After the East Carolina win at the Cam Henderson Center, I was very encouraged at the direction the team was headed in conference play. Then they go to Southern Miss, and we don't need to relive what happened there. We all know how bad the loss was, 56 points. Turn around, and you think the worst as they go right from Hattiesburg to Memphis, Tennessee to take on the Tigers and then play the Tigers toe-to-toe and, quite frankly, should have beat Memphis in that ball game. So you're left with this feeling of, oh, well, I don't know who's going to show up and then turn around and play SMU on Wednesday night and another lackluster performance where fans come away, again, scratching their head, going, well, what is this team? One night it plays with heart and passion and the will to win, and the next night looks like it doesn't even want to be on the court. Tom Harrion said as much in his post-game press conference and in his post-game comments uh, on the Thundering Herd IMG Sports Network that uh, the team didn't have what it took to get the job done. The defense was terrible, didn't want to play defense. And fans at this point in the year, I think, are just plum exhausted. The expectations for the athletic program as a whole coming into the 2012-2013 campaign, football and basketball, they were sky high. Remember, Marshall, football-wise, coming off the bowl win, everything is trending upward. Marshall basketball got into the Conference USA tournament and really, really surprised some people with a deep run into the championship game and just ran out of steam, quite frankly, uh, by the time they got to tangle with Memphis, was a bubble team. People were talking about Marshall being in the NCAA tournament. Didn't get it, got the NIT invite, and was quickly eliminated from that tournament. But the trends were going upward. The trend was in a positive direction. People were expecting the football team to maybe win eight games this year, compete for the Conference USA title for the first time since this team joined CUSA. And the same thing in basketball. Folks thought this was going to be the year that maybe Marshall knocks Memphis off the pedestal. The last shot at Memphis as the Tigers go to the Big East. Even some of the experts were predicting this. And folks, this is what Marshall fans, this is what Marshall fans look like in August right here. This is the year we go all the way, 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 all the way. way. You know, the Cleveland Indian fans there in Major League Two when they signed Jack Parkman does the little shimmy. That was the positive atmosphere. That was the positive thinking surrounding the athletic program in August. And what happens? Well, kind of like the Indians in Major League Two, everything just falls apart. The defense is terrible in football this year. The football team doesn't live up to the expectations. Offense soars. Offense puts up numbers that have not been seen uh, at Marshall since Byron Leftwich graduated. But they go 5-7. and seven. No bowl game. No postseason play. You look at games and you go, my God. Gosh, they should have won that game. You play UAB and get beat. Uh, Lose at East Carolina when it looked like you had sewn the game up. To get bowl eligible, you beat East Carolina. Marshall's playing in a bowl game. But they don't. They go 5-7. and That leaves herd fans with that bitter taste in their mouth. Then the basketball season starts. And again, the expectations are soaring. This is going to be the year. This will be the year Marshall knocks Memphis off the top of the pyramid. This will be the year Marshall returns to the NCAA tournament. And they struggle a little bit early on. Well, they couldn't close out a couple of games early on. Well, that's okay. The offense is there. This team is looking good. And things just steadily declined to the point now, uh, I wrote a column several, uh, several weeks ago, it was a month back, that Marshall hit rock bottom against Ohio. I was terribly wrong. I think rock bottom, well, at least close to rock bottom, came at Southern Miss. They may have not hit rock bottom yet. So now after all that expectation, after all that buildup at the beginning of the year, heard fans kind of look like this 
at this point in the season. Hey, I told you. <laughs> Bring out the tarp. Cover the field. I can't watch this anymore. It's over. Turn the lights out. Let's get the bulldozers in here and turn this place into a parking lot. That's right. Some fans calling for uh, firings, wanting coaching changes. Maybe they want to turn the Cam Anderson Center into a parking lot at this point. But fans have a bitter taste. And I spoke with, well, corresponded with some friends before the show today, and they conveyed as much. They don't see that light at the end of the tunnel because there was supposed to be a light at the end of the tunnel this year, and instead that light just keeps getting further and further away. The football team was supposed to be better. The football team was supposed to win eight or nine games. It didn't. It didn't come close. And all indications point to the basketball team. It's not going to be good. Let's just – it's not going to knock Memphis off the top. Barring some miraculous run through the Conference USA tournament, and right now, folks, I don't see that even as a possibility. This team is going to have to chalk this year up to an absolute disaster of a season. And fans are tired. Fans are tired of being on that precipice of getting back to uh, some level of success. And it's frustrating. It's frustrating to watch and frustrating to know you can't get back to where you want to be, that teams aren't living up to their potential. Players aren't playing up to the talent that they have around them. And this is a very talented Marshall basketball team. I don't think anybody will dispute that, but for whatever reason, whether it is uh, the coaching, uh, may, trying to fit players into a system that doesn't fit their style, maybe the players aren't taking the instruction. Maybe the coaching is fine. Maybe it's the players not paying attention, not doing what they're told to do on the floor. I don't have those answers, but fans are left with these questions and the bitter taste in their mouth. Now, the only way you're going to get them back, and remember, Marshall's right in the middle of a fundraising campaign uh, to build new facilities and try to improve the athletic program as a whole. And Mike Hamrick has a very tough job to try to raise money in this environment because fans are going to open up their wallets when your teams are winning five games on the football field and then tanking like this Thundering Herd basketball team has over the last couple of weeks. The good news, signing day is a week away, and that is always a new beginning. And there is still time. Things can get turned around, but it's not going to happen this year. And I think the Herd faithful are finally starting to run out of patience. You know, the Indians fans, Tyler, they did come around in the end. I think. Of course, they never did show the Indians actually winning the World Series. They just went there. Coming up next week, we will have a special edition, special signing day edition of the Stampede as the Thundering Herd's 2013 recruiting class becomes official. Uh, I'll actually be down in Huntington for signing day, so we will have a special edition of the Stampede coming up next week. Com comprehensive Herd signing day coverage here at the website as well. Follow me over on Twitter, Dave Wilson MN, at Dave Wilson MN, my Twitter handle. Email me anytime if I like you. I may respond to it. D. Wilson at WVRadio.com. We'll see you next week on The Stampede.